Welcome to the show, sports fans. This is the Treasure Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. That's right. Welcome in another edition of the Treasure Valley PrepCast here on IdahoSports.com, breaking down District 3, uh, 5A, all the way down to 1A, week in, week out. Brandon Bainey joined by Logan Green. Logan, it looks like you got a haircut recently. I did. I did buzz it off um, <laughs> on Monday. So, you know, the uh, the quick clip. As I say, it's um, nice and easy. It looks good. So if you want to see Logan's haircut, uh, you can watch the video version of this podcast uh, at uh, the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel, as well as the Facebook page. Audio only as well, available at IdahoSports.com and wherever you download your podcasts. All right. It was a busy week of uh, activities this past week in in the Treasure Valley. Uh, Obviously, there were some big football matchups, and we'll talk about that. But I thought the the... The signature event uh, this past weekend was in volleyball. The annual Idaho Classic, which is hosted by Mountain View High School, um, took place this past weekend. So this is a big tournament that takes place at Mountain View, but Mountain View's team isn't involved. They just provide the facilities because the Idaho Classic, year in, year out, brings the best 3A, 2A, and 1A volleyball programs from around the state to the capital city for, for a great weekend of competition. It's, it's really a small school showcase. And um, generally you see a lot of teams that are going to make deep runs at state come over and compete. It was really fun. Yeah. I know. And another great tournament this year and you know what, these don't count anymore, right? Against the the schedule. So it's a little different in that regard, but I think you really learn who your team is. And you know where you stack up against some of the better teams, even if it doesn't necessarily count on your official record. I mean, it it counts, right? It it matters what happens in those games. And it matters when you get to state, you learn things about your team. You learn things about other teams that you might see along the way as well. Definitely. So we want to give shout outs to uh, the Melba Mustangs, the 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 2A power. Uh, They went to the Idaho Classic, uh, got to the gold bracket, ended up winning the title. Um, So Melba wins the crown just for comparison. Filer took second. That's a three, a school. So Mm -hmm. Melba beat Filer in the championship and then South Fremont, another three, a school took third. So Melba went up against some big three, a teams and came away with the, with the victory. You know, Melba is very quietly uh, putting together. We talked last week about like Fruitland uh, girls soccer and how they've just kind of been annihilating everybody. And it's kind of been underreported. Same thing with Melba volleyball. You know, they have really had a nice season. Um, in fact, their their last match prior to the Idaho Classic was their most difficult match of the season. They played New Plymouth last Thursday and won, but it took five sets, three to two. But right. they've already they've already beaten Coal Valley Christian, Nampa Christian, New Plymouth. Those are kind of the teams that are angling to knock off the Mustangs. And so Melba sits with a, a record of seven and zero, uh, still undefeated. Yeah, and if you look at their schedule, Melba's right. The only um, they they won that game against New Plymouth three to two, um, and the only other ca- game that counts on the schedule, right? I, you know, excluding tournaments, um, where they've even lost a set was to uh, you know our one A D two powerhouse Horseshoe Bend, right? So that's the only team that they've given up a set to, and that's Horseshoe Bend's only loss. Uh, and if you trail that horseshoe bend, they, you know, they gave counsel their only loss. So we have three very good two A and one A teams here in the Treasure Valley at the one A D two and the two A. And so I believe, like, right, counsel won another one of those brackets as well. I believe, right? Yes. So counsel won the silver bracket. So there was a gold bracket, a bra- a silver bracket, and a bronze bracket. And so counsel <clears throat> came through and won the silver bracket. Horseshoe Bend actually qualified for the gold bracket and lost in the it was either the quarterfinals or the semifinals but they made a very deep run which again for a school right. the size of horseshoe bend is so impressive um i feel like we talk about horseshoe bend volleyball a lot so so i wanted to kind of shine the spotlight on some of the other volleyball teams that are really excelling you know when you, when you look at this roster for melba it's it's the usual suspects it's all the same athletes that help them dominate in basketball mm-hmm. and dominate in track you know kendall clark and Kaylee Wilson and Maya Young and uh, Ellie Johnson. I mean, it's just uh, athletes up and down the roster. And the thing with Melba, too, is they've got Hallie Arnold in the middle at at 5'11". That's pretty good size for a 2A volleyball team. 
Yeah, and you mentioned the athletes. I mean, we saw this on the boys' side, right? A lot of the football players go play basketball, go play whatever it is in the spring. And when a school can get a good crop, so to say, of good athletes that come in, they're just going to, at the lower levels, right, they're just going to run through. They're going to be able to dominate in multiple sports all year long because they have those players on the football field, on the volleyball court that translate to basketball, that translate to track and field, baseball, softball, whatever it is. So right now, Melba, Melba, uh, Melba's got it going on for sure. <laughs> no doubt. Um, and then, yes, we, we wanted to talk about council. Um, they won the silver bracket and, you know, they're led by Paula Tucker, who's one of the great uh, coaches in the state of Idaho. And they have, you know, a lot of the same athletes we'll see during basketball season, Hope Zolman and uh, Kiana Tharp and Rihanna Iveson and, and Michaela, you know, Michaela Hart at six one. Um, also yeah. a big press, you know, the key to volleyball really is having size in the middle and athletic attackers on the outside that those are the teams that typically do really well at state and horseshoe bend has size in spades um council has size melba has size uh, they all three have kind of similar makeup similar dna if you will and so we're, we're really excited to to watch these teams continue to compete as the season goes along um, in fact, last night, Council got back into conference play and beat Garden Valley 3-0, swept the Wolverines. So um, Melba, despite that 7-0 start, they're just 1-0 in conference. Um, all those matches against Nampa Christian and Cole Valley and New Plymouth um, didn't count towards the league record because the, the league got bigger this year, Logan. It used to be kind of a six-team conference, and then North Star mm -hmm. Charter moved up, and Ambrose is competing there. So it's an eight-team um, conference, and so you can't have 16 conference matches. You can't – or 14. You can't play everybody twice. It's just not enough right. room on the schedule. So only your second matchup with everybody will count towards the, the conference record. So Melba's still got work to do, but they've laid really good foundation. Right. It's, uh, you know, and they played a couple of 3A schools in that as well. That's only going to help them. And then going, of course, to this tournament and winning it is just, it just bodes well, right, for postseason play, which is right around the corner. Definitely. In fact, the only non conference match they have left is Nissa. They'll play Nissa next Monday. Otherwise, it's all conference matches from there. So we will uh, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about football now. Let's let's switch gears here. I thought the and again, it, it wasn't surprising that this team won, but but by how much they won. Uh, the big story of the weekend, I thought, was Nampa taking yeah. it to CUNA in, in a 5A SIC football battle. Um, Nampa again kind of makes it look easy and runs away. Yeah, I mean, right now Nampa is sitting at three and one overall, three and zero oh in conference. That one loss is technically a conference loss, but it doesn't count in the conference standings because it's from the other side of the bracket. And they lost that opening game to Middleton. Um, but right now, Nampa, I mean, we said it, Brandon. We said Nampa and Middleton are not going to finish last in this conference like everybody pegged them to do. And Nampa is showing that. Not only are they not going to finish last, but this team might make some real noise, right? Uh, when you look at how it's going to shake up, I mean, they have some big games coming up. That side, you know, they haven't played Eagle and they haven't played Mountain View yet. Um, and those are, I think, those are going to be the real barrier tests to see where they stand. Um, and I think they've got chances in those games. Like we said it last week that the top two, Meridian and Rocky. I think it's Meridian, Rocky, and everybody everybody else and uh but nampa has a real chance on their side to possibly finish first second or third and there i think i mean they will they'll finish first second or third just depends on how they they show up against uh, mountain view and eagle uh, in the next few weeks yeah and they won that game uh 45 to 23 yeah. it was 28 to 23 at halftime so we thought okay, this is exactly what we thought. You know, Nampa and CUNA are two pretty good teams. They're going to battle it out. And then Nampa pitches a second half shutout on defense. I thought that was probably the most impressive aspect of the win. Yeah, that they turned up that defense. And it, it, they've been a good team the last couple of years. They have been in the thick of it at the 4A. And so it's really no surprise to see them where they're at. Um, and But like you said, I mean, the, the, the defense – showed up in the second half there, shut them out. And that's tough to do against CUNA, who has thrown the ball over just about everybody that they've played so far this season. 
Yeah, and so for CUNA, they just kind of ran out of steam. The highlights for Nampa, Daniel Carrillo uh, might be the best running back in the 4A classification, and that's saying something because, you know, Bishop Kelly's got uh, Peter Minaret, uh, who continues to stuff the stat sheet, and um, Valley Views, Tyson Fox. There's a lot of good running backs in that in that um, SIC this year, um, and I guess I'm talking about 4A. I, you know, in my head, Nampa still is 4A, but they're <laughs> right. they're 5A now. Um, but I, I think Daniel Carrillo could be the best back in in the 5A SIC as well. And and you know, you're talking about like Parker Rushton from Bora and Art Williams from Rocky Mountain. Um, you know, unfortunately for Eagle, their their stud running back, Deegan Martino, uh, suffered an injury. It sounds like he might be out for the season. Um, but, you know, in terms of 5 ASIC running backs, I'd put Carrillo, you know, up there with any yes. of them. Uh, 161 yards, three touchdowns on the ground. And then um, the defense we talked about for Nampa, Leone Afamasaga snagged two interceptions on defense. And Ethan Kinchelo, did you see this play, Logan? Ethan Kinchelo punched the ball out in the first half picked up the fumble himself and took it 40 yards for a touchdown as well. I I heard that it happened, but I did not see the play. Uh, that's pretty impressive though. It's, it's, it's a, it's a great Idaho football name, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of kids like are used to doing things like that on the field. Right. Yeah. Um, Kinchelo, of course, at Homedale um, has been uh, a prominent name for sure. And so, yeah, we're, we're keeping an eye on Napa, but you mentioned it, Logan, you're right. Um, the the heart of their schedule is really coming up here. We'll find out on Friday night. They travel to Eagle. That'll be a, a fantastic matchup. Yeah, and, and I think it's the barrier, right? Now we need to see some separation between those three um, and, and who's going to – it is – I don't know how that's going to shake up. I think the other side of the division, we know, right? We know that it's going to be Meridian Rocky, one and two, and then probably Middleton three. And then the rest – uh, those three are struggling, right? And and they're going to beat up on each other, but they're not going to beat anybody above them, right? But, the, the, you know, it, it's – we've seen Hawaii. We talked about them a couple weeks ago and how that would they shape, shape up when they started playing people above them. And we've seen them uh, – you know, they hung in there with Mountain View, uh, only lost by three, but then last week they fell to Eagle. Um, <clears throat> or excuse me, yeah, that was last week, yeah. Uh, falling to Eagle – um, and so you see that that was a 20 point game, um, that the Mustangs won that one. So you see a little separation there, at least between that top tier and a And now where does, where does Nampa fit into that? And I, I think they're, I think they're there with them. I mean, this is a team that was very competitive at the 4A last year. Um, and, and we talked, you talked about Carrillo. He is very shifty. He is a different style running back than you might see that, that pound and ground. I mean, he is, he's nifty. He can do the pound if he wants, but he can just – he's elusive. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and he's going to be tough to bring down for anybody. Um, so that Eagle-Nampa game is, is one to circle, is one to watch out for and see how it shapes up this Friday night. Definitely. Okay, let's talk about the other big football game that caught my eye was a non-conference matchup. Weezer, the defending 3A champs, played Coal Valley Christian, the preseason favorite in the 2A WIC and this one wasn't close. I mean, Weezer wins 49 to nothing. Michael Youngberg ran for two scores. Maddox Stevens added a rushing touchdown. Uh, the Weezer defense forces four turnovers. They kind of did to Cole Valley what Cole Valley wants to do to everybody this year, and that's establish the run, shorten the game, and play good defense. And so, the, I guess the question to me is, Logan, uh, last week I talked about how I wasn't sure Weezer was in that same class as Homedale. I think I have to readjust my thinking now based upon that. Uh, uh, Weezer Nation probably heard what I had to say, and um, <laughs> we're pretty fired up. My yeah, question, way to go, Brandon. Yeah. So, my question is, is Weezer that good where they're, you know, a real threat to run it back and win? the 3A title again, or is Cole Valley maybe not as good as we all thought in the preseason? I mean, I think, um, honestly, I think it's probably a, a bit of a combination of both, right? So let's take a look at Cole Valley Christian this year. Um, you know, they, their wins have come against Wendell and Grangeville. Um, and they lost to Payette who is improved, but they lost to Payette and then they lose to Weezer and that that's bad. 49 to zero. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a butt whooping to put it lightly, Brandon. Um, yeah. That's uh, and, and I think, like I said, I thought Weezer had it 
and the game I against saw against Buell, I thought they were kind of just they're figuring out who they were, and they still shut out Buell. And then they do that to Colbell. And of course, granted, that's a two A school. It's not a three A. You're playing, you know, a two A school that did not advance very far at the state playoffs last year against a three A team that won a state championship and probably could have competed against teams above them. So I still think there is a gap, right? I, I think there's a gap between two A and three A football. And, uh, you know, that has to be considered in that talk. And so I, I, I want to say, I do I think Cole Valley is probably not as good as people thought? I, I think that's true, but I don't think they're a, a bad football team. But then at the other side, I think that Weezer is good. Um, just from what I saw, their defense was very good. And, of course, I mean, you look on, on their side, you could kind of argue the same thing. I mean, they, they play Buell, LaGrange, and Grangeville, and Cole Valley. And so do you say that's, is that the, you know, how does that compare? What I don't know. We'll find out um, when they start getting into the Homedales, uh, the McCall Donnelly's and the Fruitlands that are coming down the line. But I think a little bit of mix of both of those. Yeah, Weezer opens conference play this weekend. They will host Payette. Payette uh, also beat Cole Valley this year, 24-21. Those are the Chargers' two losses. Uh, Cole Valley starts with a trip to Napa Christian, and I guess we'll we'll find out where Cole Valley sits. Um, I think Melba has shown, though, that they are kind of the the strong, you know, contender to win the title just because they've been like putting up 60, 70 points every week. And it's just, you know, they, they did lose to North Fremont um, as well, but that was a long road trip. So uh, we will have to wait and see what uh, transpires. Melba and Cole Valley play in two weeks, Logan. And I'm sure we'll have plenty to say about that matchup when yeah. it arrives. Um, all right, let's talk soccer real quick. We, we kind of talked about this last week where the top five, uh, the top three teams in the five ASIC all undefeated, right? Timberline, Boise, Rocky Mountain. And we're like, geez, we're, we're running out of room here in the regular season. When are these guys right. all, all going to play finally? Well, it's here. It has arrived. Um, the first matchup between these three schools will take place uh, Thursday night. Uh, let me double check that Saturday night um, when Timberline travels to Rocky Mountain. And that's actually going to be Saturday morning, 1030 a.m. kickoff. So Timberline and Rocky play on Saturday. Then Rocky and Boise will play on Tuesday. And then Boise and Timberline play the following Thursday. So over the next week, we're, we're finally going to figure this thing out. Right. And, and you look at it and. The bit that they had a game last on a couple weeks ago, or was it last week? Yeah, it was last week against Mountain View. Uh, Timberline did, and that so far has been, you know, besides the early games earlier on the season, was their closest game a three to one victory. Um, and so, you know, that little separation there between Mountain View and the top level. But like you mentioned, um, the next couple of days we'll find out a little bit more about these teams and, and where that gap exists and and who's going to take control. Definitely. I, I think just based upon what I've seen, I'd I'd put Timberline one, Boise two, Rocky three. They're all so, so close, but just kind of based upon what I've seen now right. that but they're all so equally talented that they all could just beat up on each other for sure. Kai Hatton has been playing really well for Timberline this year. Uh, Jake Anderson, of course, is a big, strong dude out there. Quentin Boggs uh, has been playing really well also. You know, Rocky kind of, they lost a lot uh, from from last year's team, um, but they have a good group together. Um, Riggs Peterson has played really well for them this year. And then for Boise, I mean, they just have so many athletes. I mean, their roster is so large that, um, you know, the Brave have a really good unit um, together as well. Um, Daniel Hirai has been playing really well for the Braves. So um, we'll see. It's it's going to be really fun to watch these three teams battle it out. And we'll come back next week and maybe uh, talk about what actually happened and how it all shook out. Um, real quick, let's promo what's coming up this week on the IdahoSports.com game streams uh, schedule. We've got a couple of non-conference battles yeah. that, that we're going to be bringing to you. Um and, and it's like the two ships passing in the night, right? Highland and Middleton are going to hit the road. Highland will be at Meridian. That's going to be a really interesting non-conference yes. matchup, right? The, and this is this and, and both non-conference matchups for the Treasure Valley, I think are going to be great gauges to see where people line up, right? Because Meridian plays 
Island, and we've seen what Meridian has done to teams this year. Um, it hasn't been really close, and it, it always surprises me, Brandon, to look at the polls and see Rocky Mountain so highly above, you know, 12 first place votes for the Grizzlies and nothing for Rocky or nothing for Meridian. I, I, me, I think I'm Meridian's above Rocky. That's just from what I've seen this year. I just, I think that they're a little, that's just my opinion. I know burn me, everybody out there, but that is just my opinion. Um, and, and this week we're going to see how that, and we mentioned this on another one, but we're not seeing those Rigby's not playing anybody over here. Um, and, and so, you know, when we get Highland was a state championship team a year ago, played for a state championship. So we're going to get a little um, taste of how these two conferences compare and where Highland sits compared to what possibly is the best team in the state and then how they take that back. And then on conversely, um, Meridian or Middleton is going to go play Thunder Ridge. And this is a good gauge, I think, at the middle, right? Because Thunder Ridge, not the upper echelon over there. Middleton, same thing, not the top, but Middleton probably – is right in the mix to make a state tournament. And I think they're probably very similar, right? And how they match up on paper and how they might be perceived by the polls that there's three or four teams that are going to be above them, but nobody, you know, they're going to beat the teams below them. And that's what we've seen from Thunder Ridge so far this year. So it'll be interesting to see how those two battle and maybe who has the upper leg between those two. Definitely. So two non-conference matchups for you on IdahoSports.com Friday night, Highland at Meridian, Middleton at Thunder Ridge. Those should be really fantastic matchups. All right, Logan, uh, thanks for hopping on and doing this. We kind of gave you a sampling of what transpired over the past week, and we'll be back again next week to, to break it all down even further. Yeah, it should be fun. It should be a, a great weekend of, you know, everything's starting to, to separate itself. And so it's always fun. I can't believe that we're only, you know, a month away from those 5A um, like district championship matchups that are coming. I think those are played on the 22nd. So that's a month from tomorrow. And then, you know, a month and a week from tomorrow or, you know, from Friday, we have state tournament games. Just uh, it's wild. Yep. The end times are upon us. That's for sure. Um, all right. Thanks for tuning into the Treasure Valley Prep Cast, everybody. We'll see you back here next time. Enjoy the competitions this weekend. For Logan Green, I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for tuning in on IdahoSports.com.